Hi, I'm Joe Herbert from Joe Herbert Realty, and today I'm back with episode four of our video series called The Golden Rules for Real Estate Sales Success. And the first four videos were about the four stages of the real estate profession itself. And today we're gonna to do a video that's stage three of the profession. It's called Transaction Management. In stage one, if you watch that video, we were talking about business acquisition. That was about generating leads and turning those leads into clients. Uh, in stage two, which was business fulfillment, that's when a lead became a client and you helped them find a house to buy or you helped them sell their house. And at the end of that stage two, their house went under agreement. And now it's time to perform transaction management, that's stage three. And these are all the tasks that you're gonna help your client do to get to the closing table so there can be a closing and they either buy and own that home or they give ownership as the seller to the new buyer, okay? But every real estate transaction has a closing and transaction management is everything you're gonna do to help your client get to the closing table. And we're gonna break this transaction management down into four different sets of tasks. They're checklist-based tasks, and it's a great guide uh, to help you manage your transactions or to even use if you're gonna hire a personal assistant or an administrative assistant. You can put those tasks into an Excel file, uh, into your CRM system. Um, if you're using Dot Loop or DocuSign or SkySlope, you can put those checklists right into those workflow uh, features. So we're gonna cover those steps in this next video. So stay tuned for transaction management. So now we're gonna cover the details of transaction management. Again, this is episode four of our video series, The Golden Rules for Real Estate Sales Success. And the first section we were discussing the different stages of the real estate profession. And now we're on stage three of the real estate profession, which is transaction management. So what is transaction management? Okay, so stage one was turning leads into clients. Stage two was helping those clients get properties under agreement. And now stage three is helping them actually buy the property, helping them do all the things they need to do to get to the closing table, to either sell that property or buy that property. So you can see right there, you know, they've signed an agreement uh, with all the terms of how they will buy or sell a home. And now they need your help guiding them on satisfying all the terms of that purchase agreement. Transaction management is all the tasks from the time your client's home goes pending, which means it went under agreement, and the closing day. And that's the day when the buyer gets possession and the seller gives possession. Fortunately, most of transaction management can be performed by an administrative assistant or some support staff. You don't have to have a real estate license. There are some tasks that the realtor does need to do. And again, I, I like to break things down in stages. I'm, I'm a process person. And um, I broke transaction management down kind of into four stages. Uh, you, can, you, can put the, you can group these tasks together into four, four sets of tasks. And what happens is as soon as your clients uh, sign that purchase agreement, whether it's the buyer or the seller, there's a bunch of stuff you need to make sure the whole property goes pending, your broker's aware that it's pending, the lender's aware that it's a pending. So we're gonna cover those tasks. And once those tasks are done, most purchase agreements have some contingencies in them. There's financing contingencies, or ins there's inspection contingencies, and helping your clients satisfy and respond to the outcome of these contingencies, that's its own set of tasks. Once those tasks are, those tasks are done and the contingencies are satisfied, the likelihood of the deal closing goes up exponentially. And so you kind of move on to what I call pre-closing tasks. This is notifying the lenders, the, the attorneys, or the closing companies, the insurance agents, the utility companies, that everything needs to get done because this property is about to change hands. Once you attend that closing and the property does change hands, there's a small set of what I call post-closing tasks. And again, that's... Um, making sure the property is noted online and on the MLS that it has closed, what it sold for, giving all the proper uh, documentation to your broker, and ultimately getting paid. So those are the four sets of tasks in transaction management. 
So let's explore each one. And first we're gonna explore these tasks from the listing agent side and then from the buying from the buyer's agent side. So, from, so the listing agent pending tasks are, are these right here. And there could be other ones. These are just, I think, the most important. You're gonna deliver that earnest money deposit check. That's the buyer's deposit check to your listing broker's office. You're gonna copy the seller um, with all of the signed purchase agreement documents. You're gonna email the buyer and the buyer's agent a summary of the key dates in the agreement, when it, un when it went under agreement, um, when the deposit check is due, when the buyer has to make loan uh, application, when all the contingencies need, contingencies need to be satisfied, and what's the closing date. It's a great idea to send those to the buyer's agent so that they're on the same page, that they understand the purchase agreement the same way that you do. Then you want to enter all of your pending data in your transaction management system. Again, if you're using DotLoop or DocuSign or a good CRM system, they usually have a workflow tool in there. And you can already have these, all these check boxes in there. And now you're going to go in and you're going to upload the purchase agreement, a copy of the deposit check, uh, and get your transaction management rolling in whatever system you use. If you're not using a transaction management system, then you're likely saving uh, documents to the cloud and your broker is saving them to a cloud. So you want to copy all the paperwork to your broker and your cloud storage. If you're using a good transaction management system like Doc, .loop or DocuSign, we use .loop, you can invite the insurance agent, the lender, the inspector, the attorneys, the other realtor into the loop so they can all collaborate on the transaction. Then, of course, you want to go in your MLS and you want to change the listing status to pending uh, or pending and showing or whatever you need to change it to, but it needs to be updated online. So that's the uh, listing agent pending tasks. Then you have your listing agent contingency tasks. And you want to, you want to verify the buyer has delivered the earnest money deposit check to your broker or they gave it to you and you gave it to the broker. You want to make sure the buyer makes loan application. Um, when the buyer gets their inspections done and sends you the results, you're going to review them with your seller. You're going to help your seller resolve any inspection issues. You want to make sure the buyer is getting all the, the, the data they need to their lender so the lender can approve their loan. Make sure the appraisal has been ordered. Keep communicating with the lender and the buyer's agent and your seller. Get a copy of that loan approval as soon as possible so you know that financing contingency has been met. The next phase, now that let's, let's assume all the contingencies have been met, it's time to get to the closing table, okay? You're going to, in our market, we generate and send out a transmittal, a listing realtor does it. It's got a summary of the deal. It goes to both, both closing companies, the other realtor, and it goes to the lender. Um, you're going to communicate with the sellers. Communicate with the seller's closing agent to make sure they got the transmittal. They have the purchase agreement. See if they have any questions about anything on the transmittal. You're going to send a list of all the utility company information to your seller and make sure they request utility transfers. Call your seller before the closing and verify that they've requested those transfers. Request the earnest money deposit check from your broker. You're going to take that to the closing. That's the buyer's deposit. You're going to bring a closing folder with you. It's going to have a transmittal in it, closing gift for your seller. It's, you're going to bring the earnest money, money deposit check. Attend the closing. Okay, after the closing, uh, well, again, items to bring to that closing, the GCI check, make sure the keys are there. Um, we have a Joe Herbert Realty nice vinyl closing folder. We put all the seller's documents in there, and we give it to the seller so they can store that somewhere. And then ask your client at the closing table, who do they think is the next person they know that will be selling or buying a house or real estate? It's a great time to ask that question because for the past however many months you've been trying to sell their house, they've been talking to their family members, their neighbors, their coworkers, uh, their employees about the fact that they're selling their house. And those people have told your client if they're thinking about selling or buying. So you want to ask, have you talked to anybody that's thinking about buying or selling. You want to get a referral. It's a great time to ask. Let's move on to the post-closing tasks for the listing agent. You're going to take that GCI check, the gross commission income check, 
and a copy of the HUD or the closing disclosure to your broker. You're going to mark the transaction close in your transaction management system. And by the way, you will upload that HUD or that closing disclosure into your dot loop or your DocuSign uh, system. Um, you're going to input the buyer's agent name in the MLS um, as the selling agent, uh, what the property sold for, and you're going to change the status to sold. And now you want to send out a request for a review on Zillow, Facebook, etc. Let's go to the buying side. Back to the buyer, okay? The buyer's agent has pending tasks. They're gonna scan a copy of that earnest money deposit check to their cloud storage or their transaction management system if they've gotten it you know, prior to the buyer bringing it to the listing broker. If they did bring it to you, you're gonna deliver that check to the listing broker's office or you're gonna verify that the check was delivered. You're gonna copy your buyer on all the documents they signed and a copy of their check. You're going to copy those documents to the cloud or your transaction management system. You're going to enter that pending data in your transaction management system in the, and again in their workflow tool. Um, set up the key dates in your transaction management system or your CRM, your CRM system so you can track all those dates. Again, the date it was fully executed, uh, the date the deposit check is due, the, the date they have to make loan application by the contingency satisfying dates, the loan date, the closing date. Put those in your system, whatever. If you're using Excel, uh, you know, dot loop, your CRM, but put those in there so you can track them. You're going to email the buyer and the listing date, those key purchase agreement dates, so they see what you understand as the key dates. Add your transaction professionals again to your transaction management system so they can collaborate on the transaction. Let's go on to the buyer agent's contingency tasks. You're going to help your buyer schedule their inspections, okay? You're going to copy the inspector on the MLS sheet, the seller disclosure, lead paint disclosure, and your buyer's contact info. Um, if your buyer hasn't selected a lender yet, which ideally you want to be working with pre-approved buyers, um, you're going to get them into a lender. You're going to recommend a real estate attorney, an insurance company, uh, an inspector. Email a copy of the buyer's purchase agreement to the lender. Verify that your buyer makes loan application. Set up access for your buyer's insurance company. If your buyer does get inspections done, you're going to review the results with them and you're going to help negotiate um, to satisfy those uh, inspection issues with the seller. Uh, verify, the buyer that, verify that the buyer has gotten all the documents to the lender to get the loan approved. Call the lender, make sure the appraisal has been ordered. Um, communicate with the lender, the listing agent, and your buyer. Uh, copy the listing agent on the loan approval as soon as it comes in. Again, if you get through these, now it's time to move towards the closing. And now you've got your buyer agent pre-closing tasks. <laughs> copy the buyer, okay, I'm sorry, copy the listing realtor with all the buyer's contact information so the listing realtor can send out the transmittal. Communicate with the buyer's closing agent to make sure they got the transmittal. See if they have any questions. Get the utility company data to your buyer. Make sure they transfer the utilities prior to closing. Do a final walkthrough with your buyer. And if they don't want to do one, you go do it. But do a final walkthrough. Take photos of anything well, first of all, take a photo of your buyer in front of the house holding a sold rider. You can put that on LinkedIn. You can put it on Facebook, Instagram. But take photos of any final walkthrough issues so they can be resolved at the closing table. Garbage that's left behind, damage from the, the seller moving out, etc. Make sure you have a, a copy of or access to the purchase agreement and the transmittal when you're at the closing. Attend the closing. Bring a closing gift for your client. Bring a vinyl closing folder and uh, that closing gift, okay? And again, at the closing table, ask your client who's the next person they know that will be buying or selling real estate. Your buyer's been talking for weeks or months about buying a home to everybody. And they're going to know if somebody else is buying one or somebody else is selling one. Next, we've got our buyer agent post-closing tasks. And you're going to bring your GCI check and a copy of the closing documents to your broker. 
you're going to mark the transaction closed in whatever system you're using to do transaction management. You're also going to scan and upload a copy of that HUD or that closing disclosure into your transaction management system. Send out a request to get a Zillow review. And we use dot loop, and you can just trigger that with a click of a button. As soon as you make the loop um, closed, you can send out a Zillow review request. It's really nice. And then make sure the listing broker inputs your name in the MLS as the selling agent, the correct price, etc. So those are the uh, transaction management tasks. Uh, that's a 10,000 foot view, of course. But um, those are the types of checklist, checklists you need to have. You, we have paper checklists if people want to do it by hand. You can track them in Excel. Um, you can do them in a really good CRM system. Um, our Perfect Storm CRM system allows us to do transaction management. And our dot loop uh, document system allows us to do transaction management. So we have it all automated. But you want to have some sort of steps that you're tracking. Um, so the, especially when you start to do, when you get multiple properties pending, you can lose track of the dates and what has been done and not done very easily. So you definitely want to be using systems to help you with your transaction management. So that's all uh, for today. Episode five is going to be stage four of the real estate profession, which is, which is post-closing client relationship management, which is a favorite of mine and it's very, very very critical if you want to grow your business and keep your life work balance. So thanks for watching today and have a great week.